Good morning and welcome to our daily devotions today as we start out our day and wanting to find the confidence on which to live a courageous life for Christ today. My readings have recently been taking me through the book of the Revelation. And one of the verses at the beginning in chapter 1, verse 8, has really caught my imagination. Let me share that with you. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, those are amazing words in themselves. But even more amazing when you understand a little bit of the context of the book of the Revelation. Here is the Apostle John writing, who probably during the life of our Lord Jesus was in his late teens, perhaps very early 20s. Now somewhere around 95 AD, he's a much more older, elderly man, certainly in his mid 80s. He's been exiled to an island called Patmos. Not a very pleasant place. Don't sort of book your holiday to go there. 10 miles long, about uh, six miles wide, nothing more than rock. It was actually where they did a lot of mining in those days. And he was there because he had lived faithfully for Christ in a world that didn't want to hear about Jesus. Particularly at that time with Emperor Domitian, who was persecuting all those who did not recognize that he was the Almighty. He was a God on earth, a demigod. And you can imagine that having a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and recognizing that he alone is Lord and God, sovereign over the universe, came immediately into conflict with that day. Now, in the book of the Revelation, God gives us an amazing help, both to John's own day, those who were facing persecution, and some would even die, but really through all days and certainly into our uncertain days. James Montgomery Boyce, the a great Bible teacher of the last century, he put it this way, which I think just gives the setting of what we find in the book of the Revelation. He said, Revelation is meant to enable Christians from every age, in every possible circumstance, to view what is happening in history from God's point of view. Not man's, and in to enable them to have comfort and strength as Christians to live for Christ in their days. I read the news this morning, and it was monotonously, crushingly the same. Few little loosenings of the lockdown, but also warnings that more may come in lockdowns in the future. I've always wondered what it's like to live in strange days when momentous events are happening. We can read like World War II dispassionately many decades later. But what was it like to be in the middle of all these things happening? Well, we're discovering ourselves. Notice what John says to those in his day who were facing uncertainty. Three things, I think, to strengthen them come out of that verse. Number one, our God is the God of every day. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Very simply, the first and the last letter of the Greek al alphabet. Today we would say, I am the A and the Z. <laughs> and in that one simple statement, God is saying this. He is in absolute control. In our day, there are many who would say the world is out of control, or more precisely, at least from the radical atheist of our day, that there isn't really any control at all. That actually serves the egotists who want to be in control in our day because it means they can do whatever they want. But actually, here we're told at the very outset of the book of the Revelation, this is God's story. The world, time, history is his plot line. And that even the, the strong men and the egotist of our day, at best, are minor couple of sentence subplots. Sadly, tragically, for many of them, they won't even get a footnote. And we're told that when we walk through our days, that there is this huge plot line that God is working out. 
He's the Lord over all history, beginning and the end. And we can trust him as we work it out. The second thing he tells them is that he is the Lord of our day. Now, a little bit slightly different uh, when it goes on to say, not only am I the Alpha, the Omega, but he uses that word, I am. Now, any kind of Greek geek will automatically have their ears prick up at that point. The I am, ego, I me, is the same Greek transliteration of the words that God spoke to Moses in the burning bush. I am who I am. They're the same words that our Lord Jesus used to identify that he is God. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. So anyone in certainly in John's day would have understood that. And we understand that as well saying, look, here is the one who is gloriously over our time at the moment. That gives us great confidence in the days in which we find ourselves. Uh, A.W. Tozer, the evangelical Christian mystic, mystic of the last generation, he said, God dwells in eternity, but time dwells in God. Now that's the right order. Time doesn't define God. Our days do not define, change, moderate who God is. He is gloriously who he is. Some people think that makes God fossilized. Actually, God is full. In other words, he could not be more than he is already because he is perfect. To be different would be less. That's our great confidence. Our God is unchanging in these days we live in and all that we face. Even if we're facing the uncertainty of the job prospects in the future, God is still the same. He's still faithful. And then finally, the one last thing is when it says who is, who was, and who is to come. I don't know if you noticed how the order just isn't right. You would expect who was, who is, and who is to come, but that's not what it says. It begins with who is. And actually it's done on purpose to give us courage in our day. Because it tells us not only is he the God of all days, not only is he the God over days, but he's the God who's in the muck of today with you and I. And that gives us tremendous confidence that he is the one who is right here with you and I today to take us through our difficult times. In John's day, it was for those who were facing persecution. For us, it is the challenge to live faithfully for Christ in the days in which we find ourselves with all the challenges around us, but to do it with utter courage because we have confidence that our God is unchanging and in the muck of today with you and I as we trust in Christ. Let's pray. Most gracious and merciful Lord, we want to thank you as we awaken this day for the confidence we have in you. We want to thank you for the great plot line that you are working out through all the days of history. And we want to thank you that you are not captured in the plot line, but above it. But most of all, we want to sit in the wonder that you are right here with us in the middle of it. And I just want to ask for each of us today, you'll give us a reassurance of that presence with us. I want to ask that for those who are facing uncertainty, perhaps with job or the future, you'll give them courage today. I want to pray for those going back into schools and parents thinking about sending their children to school. I want to pray that you'll give them the confidence that they can be courageous in these uncertain days. And I want to pray for those of us who may be a little bit older and we feel very uncertain and may be fearful of the world around us. Give us confidence that our God is not changed. You are with us, you will keep us, and you will guide us. Be with us this day, we ask and pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.